begin the installation by offering a system suitable for a given car and provide the price of the service. Together with the customer, arrange the location of the switch and the refueling valve. Inspect the vehicle for any mechanical damage before starting each assembly. You may wish to use a diagnostic scanner to see if there are any irregularities in the engine operation, read the error codes, short and long-term corrections, report any anomalies to the owner of the car. Before entering the assembly station, fill out an acceptance of the customer's vehicle form with the customer including car specification, customer data, set assembly conditions, and any damage or defects which have been discovered in the car. The form must be signed by both parties. The assembly of the gas installation can now be started. Remember to disconnect the battery before the assembly. The reducer is the first component mounted. Its purpose is to expand gas and maintain a constant pressure at its outlet. The reducer must be attached to fixed and stable elements inside the engine compartment. In order to heat up the reducer, connect it to rubber hoses that deliver coolant from the engine's cooling system. In most cars, you should plug in parallel to the cooling system between the heater and engine block the so-called small circuit. Solenoid valve. This valve blocks the flow of gas to the reducer when running on petrol and releases it when switching to gas. Now, let us briefly discuss the design of the solenoid valve. Gas inlet. Gas line running directly from the tank connects here. Gas outlet. Gas exits here and is led by a gas line to the reducer. This lid covers a liquid phase filter, which should be replaced about every 10,000 kilometers. It is the first filter within the system which removes contaminants from the gas before it reaches the reducer. The coil, which raises the pin inside the solenoid when energized, ensures the free flow of gas to the reducer. The solenoid valve is mounted to the body of the car, similarly to the reducer. Place it as close to the reducer as possible. The controller is the core of the entire system. It controls the gas system operation and determines gas injection times. You can easily connect to this kind of controller if you have a basic understanding of a car electrical system and a gas controller wiring diagram. To facilitate the procedure, it is good to locate a section of the electrical wire harness where all the signals are present, engine speed, petrol injector signals, lambda probe. With a voltage probe, make a parallel connection to the signal wire. If a vehicle features UEGO sensor, connect in series, cutting the current signal wire. Emulation of injectors can be carried out in the form of a plug or by soldering into the bunch. Two electrical wires, supply and signal ones, are linked to the petrol injectors from the petrol controller. If you decide to connect by soldering, the signal wires of injectors must be located. Cut the wire open and connect to it following the diagram. Engine speed is another signal that the controller requires. Trace it to the wiring harness running to the ignition coil. Install the petrol gas switch inside the cab by connecting it to the ignition switched positive wire and for STAG 300 premium controller, connect OBD2 adapter at the diagnostic socket. OBD2, 16 pin socket, connect SXC diagnostic tester in order to locate the pins to link the OBD2 adapter. Join the wires according to the diagram. Connect the petrol gas switch supply to the ignition switched positive wire of the key switch. This wire should be energized when powered on and de-energized when turned off. Proceed to drill holes for injection nozzles. 
Holes should be made with a drill of 4.8 millimeter diameter. Perform M6 thread inside the holes. Before screwing the nozzles in, apply a high temperature resistant sealant on the thread. Remember to make the thread and holes in such a way that the screwed nozzles have the same angle as petrol injectors. Insert 4 mm diameter gas hoses to be connected with injectors on the nozzles. They should be the same length. Drill a hole in a common section of the intake manifold for a vacuum nozzle. Insert 4 mm diameter hose on the screwed in nozzle. The hose should be further linked to the reducer's vacuum connection pipe for modulation and to the pressure vacuum sensor. We will now describe the PS02 pressure vacuum sensor. Connect the MOP intake manifold vacuum instrument nozzle to be linked with the vacuum pipe from the intake manifold by mounting the pipe on the other side to reducer's vacuum connector pipe. The socket to which the gas controller plug is connected, it enables the readout of gas pressure, MAP, vacuum and gas temperature by the controller. Gas injectors are used for dosing the gas directly into the intake manifold. Gas inlet. Coils which get the opening impulse from gas injector. Outlet nozzles by which the gas is fed into the intake manifold through the gas hose. Mount the vacuum sensor into the gas line between the volatile phase filter and gas injectors. The volatile phase filter ensures the final purification of gas, which is directed to injectors. It is to be mounted after the reducer, before the pressure vacuum sensor. Connect the temperature sensor, which sends information about the reducer's current temperature to the controller. Connect the MAP intake manifold vacuum instrument nozzle to be linked with a vacuum pipe from the intake manifold by mounting the pipe on the other side to reducer's vacuum connector pipe. When connecting the electrical plugs to injectors, it is necessary to ensure the proper sequence according to the earlier emulation of petrol injectors. Select the fuel tank by measuring the spare wheel compartment. Mark the spots to drill holes. Mark two holes for mounting screws and one hole for the ventilation duct. Secure the drilled holes with an anti-corrosion agent. Multi-valve, the valve installed in the gas tank. Its purpose is to enable the delivery of gas to the tank during fueling and release it during system activation. Gas inlet, gas outlet, coil, which similarly to the solenoid valve allows pin movement, manual valve for closing the tank gas outlet, tube which carries gas pumped into the tank, float to determine gas level in the tank. Mount the multi-valve in the tank so that the float can move down up. The tank is mounted with two M12 screws. Gas level indicator in the tank. Ventilation duct to carry any leaks out of the vehicle. Mount gas hoses with metal pipe clamps. Mount solenoid electrical wire as well as gas level indication alongside the gas line using plastic clips.
Link the electrical wire harness running from the multi-valve to the controller's wires according to colors. The ventilation duct must be sealed so that no water gets underneath the tank. Metal parts should be properly preserved. Connect the following to the multi-valve, gas hose from the filler, gas hose feeding the system, and electrical wire harness for gas level indication and solenoid valve. Start the filler valve assembly. Three holes need to be made. One hole will fit the valve, and the other ones are fixing holes. Using 8mm diameter pipe, connect the filler valve and the multi-valve. After finalizing the assembly run, AC gas synchro application to communicate with the gas controller and check if all parameters are read correctly and make auto calibration. While running on gas, check all connections for leaks. Setting up the system while driving is very important and without it the car will not operate properly on gas. By monitoring the petrol injection times, short and long term corrections and lambda probe indication, set the so-called multiplier. When returning the car, hand over the necessary documents to the customer. Gas supply system installation approval, tank approval, warranty certificate and invoice for service rendered.